Hello, survivors, and welcome to RimWorld, where we are about to embark on a grand adventure. An epic story shall unfold before your very eyes. A tale of three hapless survivors crash landing on a planet that is harsh and unforgiving. Tears shall be shed, my friends, I promise you that. You will cry. You will cry of laughter and joy, but mostly of sorrow and pain. <laughs> as our hapless, intrepid, but hapless adventurers are eaten by rabid squirrels or shot by hostile pirates, or maybe they'll starve to death in the cold, cold winters. It's gonna be awesome! And I hope you guys uh, want to follow along here for the ride. So, anyway, yeah, this is RimWorld, guys. I apologize for the dramatic intro. This is RimWorld by Ludion Studios. It is an early access game currently playing Alpha 8, and I will, of course, put a link down below in the description if you want to check it out. I did also do a test drive video, and I'll put a link to that down below. And that talks about the basics of the game and where you can get it and what it's all about uh, and all that jazz. But in this series, I'm going to be focused on playing. We're going to have a, uh, a very uh, emergent storytelling role play sort of theme going on here. And I hope you guys enjoy. So here we go. Without further ado, let us create a new world for which to... Uh, drop our in which we can drop our hapless survivors our colonists and see if we can kill them off in many fun ways um so i'm going to use the seed punch wood this is basically how you create a random uh generated world and there it is and it's called nova segin so this is it you can see the various biomes here indicated by the different colors we have this tundra up here we have boreal forests we've got temperate forests uh, desert looks like and this looks like some sort of jungle now I don't have a lot of experience with this game guys I played maybe two hours so far in one game I am not a pro if you're looking to learn how to play this game this is most likely not the right series but if you want a fun and compelling story then uh, this is the place to be now after you create your world you then go to colony and you and you uh, choose your storyteller this is the artificial intelligence storyteller so this game is a lot like say dwarf fortress in that it has this uh this storytelling ai that basically assesses your situation in the game and throws monkey wrenches at you they'll throw events at you that could be good they could be bad um but it will keep you on your toes so we have three different storytellers to choose from we've got the cassandra classic we've got the phoebe base builder and we've got crazy randy random so each one of these is um kind of determines the difficulty level i suppose if you want to just have a, a, a an easy time of it you would choose phoebe base builder but if you want to have a crazy time of things and have the hardest challenge possible, you would choose Randy Random. If you want to have a gradual challenge, say start out easy with maybe just one rabid squirrel in the beginning of the game, and then slowly but surely the challenge will, uh, will escalate over time, then Cassandra Classic is the one you want to choose from. And that's what we're going to do. So Cassandra Classic, and we can also choose these various uh levels of difficulty down here and i think we're going to go with casual and this says when the storyteller sends threats after you you will be 30 percent as they will be 30 percent as large as in challenge mode so if we go to challenge mode this is 100 percent. so let's say cassandra sent 10 rabid squirrels at us in challenge mode if we're in casual mode we're only going to get three rabid squirrels instead i like that okay we'll go with cassandra and she's cute so here we go nova Sagan is the world. We're going to choose that. And now, and now, here comes the crash. Here come the survivors crash landing somewhere. We have to pick a nice spot for them. We're going to make it not easy, but not not as hard as it could be. If we want to really make things hard on them, we could dump, dump them here in the tundra where they can only grow food, say, between June and July. But that that's going to be too challenging for me. Again, I'm not very good at this game yet. I've just started playing. So I think we're going to do some something in the middle. I don't want it easy, but I don't want it hard. Let's go with a boreal forest. So our winters are going to get kind of harsh at roughly zero degrees Fahrenheit. And, uh, and that's in the middle of January. So average temperature in the winter will be zero Fahrenheit. And that translates to about like negative... 17 18 for celsius i think right 
So pretty cold. And the average temp temperature in July in the summer will be about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think for you guys that do centigrade is probably in the mid-teens. I don't know. I'm just guessing maybe like 15, I think. Anyway, let's do that. We want mountains, boreal forests, a growing period between May and August so that we can uh, grow some food when times are good. And then we, we can store it for the winter. In fact, why don't we do this? Let us... I think we can... Yeah, we can do starting month. Let's start in may so we get right into the growing period okay and we can choose a size let's just go with uh let's go large i guess i don't know i don't really know a lot of these little details guys but i know i can tell a story and we want to see some really wacky stuff happen here and hopefully we can uh keep our guys l alive long enough to get them off this planet and that is the ultimate end game i guess is to build a ship and fly off and and have a happy life or something so we're going to make it really unhappy for them for a little while. Okay, next thing we do here, guys, is create our characters. You start with, like I said, three hapless uh, space travelers. And they crash on this planet. And they all have various backgrounds and backstories, as you can see here. We've got Axel the Assassin, Victor the Brigand, and Arena the Housemaid. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, we can change these very easily simply by hitting randomize and getting rid of these fools because i'm not sure well we'll look at them Let, let's 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 take a look at each one individually here and we can just re-roll them very simply by clicking on randomize and it's going to re-roll everything to give us something completely different but i'm very curious about our assassin here a male human colonist age 68 childhood he had an adventurous childhood axel was raised to become an engineer for years he planned to stow away on a cargo ship and start a new and start anew more oh start a new more adventurous life well guess what your dreams have come true 68 years old finally your dreams have come true never stop dreaming kids uh one night after his parents fell asleep and made a sneak on board yeah see on board a cargo ship just before it left point and here he is <laughs> that's great um as an adult he was hired as an assassin so basically these just influence your numbers here that's all so you can see that down the bottom shooting plus four melee plus five social plus three blah 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 um, so really all we have to do is look at the skills. We don't have to look at that unless you want to get a kick out. You want to laugh a little bit. There you go. Uh, we're also concerned about things that these guys are incapable of. Incapable of none is perfect because if he's incapable of, say, shooting or medicine, then he'll never be able to fulfill those roles that could be important someday. So we want to make sure that they're not incapable of some things. And they also have traits, which are will be bonuses, will be penalties and bonuses to these various skills as well. Uh, let's see. So Industrious is actually pretty good, apparently, because this means he will have an easy time staying on task and focused and gets things done. That's good. He's a man of action. Global work speed. So basically what this means is global work speed plus 30%. That is pretty excellent, I must say. Let's take a look at the actual skills. What we're most concerned with right now are, I think, four or five major skills in the beginning. Um, as far as I know, and this is all just from my, my playing around and reading wikis and looking at other videos. We want, we need growing. We need some, oh, at least one person anyway, good at this stuff. A grower, a shooterer, a meleeer, <laughs> um, a cookerer, and a mediciner. So that's, those five things are really most critical at this stage of the game. So right now, this guy is, is a good shooterer. And he's good at melee combat. Not only that, not only is he good right now because his numbers are pretty high, but he has a passion for them. I mean, you would think so, right? Growing up as an adventurous child and being a hired assassin as an adult, you better be good at shooting and you better love it at melee too. He's not bad. We're going to keep him. So that's pretty rare to get like one guy that you might like right off the bat. Okay, let's put him aside. His construction's pretty good. He doesn't have any other passions though for these things, unfortunately. And by the way, yeah, so that means passion. That double flame means he's super passionate about it and he learns that skill faster because this will go up over time as, as, we, as we use them. These other things, not so much. But he could be very good for combat. We'll see. All right, uh, over here we have Victor, a male humanist colonist, colonist age 47. He was a stable boy as a kid and he's now a brigand. And he snuck onto the ship did he sneak on? I don't know what he did, but he's here. Whatever. Who cares how he got here? But he's here. He's very incapable of being social. That could be bad. And he's a brawler. He likes to shoot and punch. He's a decent miner. We already have someone that's okay with mining. I mean, uh, with melee, but that's really good. But he can't shoot worth the beans. We're going to get rid of him. We're going to get rid of him. Let's go see what Irina the housemaid has. 
Not much. She can't even, she's a housemate and she doesn't know how to care for people. And she's neurotic. But she, she's a good grower. Actually, not even that good. Yes. No, no, no. no. Alright, let's get rid of Victor. Let's get Frenchie the executive. You can't care for people who are clean and he's a depressed... No. No. This will spread, like, th like if he's depressant or volatile or abusive, then that is going to just poison the well, so to speak, and make everybody upset. And we can't have that. So we, we, we kind of want to make sure we don't get any, uh, you know, sociopaths or anything down here. So, um, physically sensitive. Uh, volatile. No! Cool skinned. Um, let's see. Shooting and melee. This guy's really good. He's not very artistic. He doesn't like to clean. He's not intellectual. But he's actually a better shooter and a better melee than than our assassin over here. And he's kind of passionate about shooting and, and whacking people's stuff. Not quite as, as passionate as our assassin, but he's a henchman, so he's got to be somewhat... Yeah, he worked for the mob. Okay, we're going to keep him around. I'm going to keep him around because uh, he's also got a passion for growing in Mining 3. Yep, he might actually be better than our other dude. And he's cool skinned. I mean, he handles warm temperatures good. Eh, all right, whatever. Let's get rid of this guy. Again, we're looking for growing. Um, here's a good grower. Oh, no, incapable of firefighting is probably not good. We need everybody on fires when they start. I'm not very, seeing very good numbers here. I'm not, I'm not concerned about the crafting and the artistic right now. We can always get new people joining our colony. We don't only ever have three people, so keep that in mind. We can capture people. We can convince people to join us later. So, But at the very beginning, we do have to be concerned about these uh, very critical skills right off the bat. All right, guys. I could spend a half an hour just doing this, but two things. First of all, we don't have a half an hour, number one. And number two, I'm not really that much of a min-maxer, but we don't want to cripple ourselves right off the bat. We don't want to end up with three absolute goofballs that are incapable of doing anything and surviving for long, because then this Let's Play is going to be, you know, three or four episodes and we're all going to die. So let me just go through them all right now, very quickly, on my own, and I'll get three halfway decent starting characters, and then we'll get rolling. So don't go away. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I got my three lucky lottery winners here, so let's take a quick look at them all, and then we'll uh, we'll get rolling here and drop them down on the planet and see what they can do. We've got Spiffy, an herbalist. So it's Sammy, first name, middle name, or nickname is Spiffy, last name is Lister. That's how that works. Um, I got rid of the assassin because I think our henchman over here is going to work out better as our shooter and fighter. So she's pretty good. She's across the board, not, not too shabby at most things. Um... I like the growing, which is seven, is pretty good, and she's got a passion for it. That's nice. And she's also a pretty decent fill in for medicine and uh, mining. She's passionate about that, etc. Okay. I'm going to keep her name just like that. That's fine. Bad luck henchman. We're going to change this guy to a name that I use quite often in my Let's Plays, and we're going to call him uh, bad, uh, Pablo. Not bad luck, but Punchwood. Because you're going to see this name a lot in the game as it's played. So we're going to do Pablo Punchwood. Punchwood. There we go. Age 37, male human colonist. Uh, we already saw him. He worked for the mob. That's why Pablo just escaped from prison not too long ago. Actually, he's been recalled, but that's another story. So he's going to be our shooter and melee guy. And then we have Chili the Miner, Boris Chili O'Donnell. We're going to keep those names because they're hilarious. So he's going to be our miner, and he's uh, good at constructing, decent at growing. But he's, he's going to be a good doc. And wait, 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 wait. A grower. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, our herbalist, obviously, is going to be a grower. Okay. Woo. Let's go. Here we go. Going to the planet. Generating the map. So this is going to generate the actual tiny little chunk of map that our colonists here, our lucky winners of the lottery, are going to land on. And their little escape pods. Oh, yeah. All right, let me sit up for this. This is so fun. I love the beginning of this thing. Uh, here we go. So the three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. Okay. I'm going to hit OK, and then we're going to pause the action. Actually, first let's watch them land. Oh, it's dark. Boom. Landing. Open up. They pop out. I hit spacebar and end it. Is he a guy? Okay. It is a guy. I just want to make sure. <laughs> He's got long hair. He's got the... What is that? That's like the 80s uh, mullet cut you got there, Chief. Not too shabby. All right. 
So right now, action is frozen in time, and there's a lot of things we need to do before we get started on anything. So this entire first episode is just going to be set up. Our initial colony setup. Characters, and then we're going to pick a base, and so we're going to plan it out, and then we put everybody into action. That's how this works. So it's not unlike, say, Towns or Nomoria, uh, Dwarf Fortress, where you basically have uh, your, your colonists, and you give them orders. You put orders into kind of a queue, right? And then they kind of do those, those tasks throughout the day um, based on a certain priority. And we have to do that as well with this overview. I'll show you how to do that. But first things first, let's take a look around and see where we are because we need a good spot to live. Oh, wow, this map is big. I never played in a big map like this before. <laughs> oh, no, everything's so spread out. Uh, I'm used to playing on a 250 by 250, so this should be interesting. I say used to play. I've played like twice so far. Um, all right, so what we want to do, this is all mountainous region. We can, we can actually mine in here. A lot of people play this just like they play Dwarf Fortress and go right into mining. I, am, I don't want to do that. I'm going to pick a place, and this looks perfect right here. We don't want to go too far from where they crash because we got all this stuff that landed next to us. We've got some med kits here. We've got some silver. We've got some wood that fell right out of the sky. Maybe that's from when the crash happened and then these trees fell down. And then we've got some starting food. So we, they, we do get a bunch of starting materials, and that's going to be good to give us a little bit of a head start while we plan up a base here. This looks really good right where we are. Okay, yeah, we have some animals down here to hunt. What are these? These are the new elk. I think these were just added. Yep, and we've got some stuff that fell out of the sky over here. We've got a bunny here, rabbit, that we can hunt. Better not eat my meals, dude, because I'll put uh, I'll put a hit on you immediately. I've got a mob, mobster working for us, so you better watch out, little bunny. Um, what else we have? Some bunch of food up here. So that X on the food and everything right now, that means that, that is forbidden. That means our, our, our colonists will not go and collect it. Because one of the first things we're going to want to do is put down a stockpile, and then they're going to start collecting some of this material and bringing it to it. All right? So I think what we're going to do is just stay right here. This is perfect. Oh, is that Mufalo? What are these? Mufalo? Buffalo? That's a pine tree. It's a Mufalo. Okay. <laughs> this is so great. All right. This looks fine, and I'll tell you why. We're going to be attacked by lots of things eventually, and we need to have these choke points set up. So we can put walls here and shoot at bad guys as they come. We can do the same over here or here so this is like a really fantastic spot it truly is so why don't we uh well, let's do it here let's do it here because we can block this off as well it gives us more area for growing and so forth you can see down here what i'm pointing at tells you a little bit about the uh the actual terrain and then over on the right we've got our outdoor temperature right now it's 38 degrees fahrenheit it's actually pretty chilly so for you guys that's uh maybe a little bit above freezing so I'm not sure what that translates to. My my guess is somewhere in the in under 10, right? Right? Single digits. It's single digits right now. It's pretty cold. Wow. Why did we move here? This is going to be rough. This right here is a geyser, a steam geyser. We can use that for providing power down the road. We can't use it right away, but we can eventually learn technologies to use that. So that's going to be pretty important. Okay, guys, I have a very general idea in my head right now. And I'm going to show you guys how to use a planning tool to plan out your initial base, which we'll do in a moment. But before we even get there, the first thing that I'd like to do is put down a stockpile. And this is going to tell my survivors here where to start piling up these goods. So they're going to start gathering them off the ground and then putting them somewhere where I tell them. And I'm thinking just right here. So I'm going to make a big stockpile. Um, that's good. Not too far away from where they are. And they can just start gathering up some of this stuff. And I'm going to unforbid the food and the med supplies and the wood. I'm gonna leave the silver alone and also the metal. Um, actually, you know, I can hold off on the metal first. I just want them to focus on uh, these few things right there. So they're gonna start gathering that stuff up when I hit the uh, space bar and, and, uh, and the time starts moving again and they'll start gathering that stuff up. Um, now I'm gonna put down a grower. I'm gonna put down a growing field. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna put another zone down and this zone is a growing zone, and I want to have it somewhere near where I think my kitchen and my my freezer will be. And I'm thinking the way I'm going to do this is build my homes here, or start building, uh, start constructing right here. I'll have home, 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 maybe home, 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 kitchen, freezer, and I want to have that near the growing fields. So I think I'm going to put the growing fields like right here next to the uh, next to the stockpile. Um, I'm not sure how big we need this. 
honestly. But I think that ought to do. And that is going to start making potato plants. So basically, someone's going to come over here, chop down the trees, and start um, growing potatoes. They're going to seed the, uh, the field with potato plants. Another thing we can do that I've seen some people do, and this may not be completely necessary right now, but let's do it anyway. We're going to put another growing strip right here, just one tiny little strip. And we're going to tell them to grow here this Zerygium. Zerygium is a, a herb, is an herb, an herbal, an herbal herb that uh, can be used as medicine. So we're going to put that there. They will, again, cut down these trees automatically that are in the way. So I don't have to tell them to do that right now. Um, now that now that that is done, I think the next thing we want to do is get everybody armed, and then we're going to actually go in here and set the priorities for tasks. So let's do that. We have. So here's all the character information, by the way. If you want to see their health, you can see the character skills that we already looked at earlier. We can see what gear they're wearing. He's got uh, Synthread t-shirt, Synthread pants, so he's not naked, at least. And he's got a door key, I guess, that opens and closes doors. He's pretty optimistic right now. The new colony here, so everybody's kind of happy about the new colony. It is cold, though. They're uncomfortably cold. So we are going to have to immediately start thinking about getting these guys warm. Um, hopefully, with the summer on the way, it should warm up a little bit. But it's pretty cold here in May. And his name is Chili. Chili the Miner, and he's cold. Stop being a baby. All right, so let's see. Let's find someone with the best shooting here, right? We have probably our henchman, pretty sure. Eight shooting for Pablo Punchwood. Yes, so Pablo Punchwood is going to get the Lee Enfield rifle, which is right there. So we're just going to go ahead and click on that, and uh, he's going to go snag that. And then we have another shooter here, which is Sammy the Spiffy Lister. is a pretty good shot, so she's going to go get the pistol. And then that leaves Chili, who is not very good at shooting or melee. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't get a gun, but he will be able to pick up a knife. There is a knife somewhere. Where's that knife? It's usually right here in the start, and he's probably sitting on it. Let me move. Move! Move your fat butt, Chili. Ha <laughs> ha! I found it. It's hidden behind the tree. Chili, fetch the knife. There we go. So now everybody's going to get equipped. You can hear him locking and loading. Now... They're already going into action. They pick up their weapons, and they're going to start doing things all on their own, which is basically whatever they have as far as the uh, the task list goes. And that is hauling. Um, or they might start cutting down trees first. I'm not really sure. We can click on them and see what they're thinking. Like, this is going to go cut grass. Pablo's going to cut grass. Spiffy's going to cut the moss. So I think they're going to get the growing first because that is a priority. Now, we can get in here and change some of their priorities simply by clicking on Overview. And you've got this priorities list. So higher priority tasks are to the left, lower priority tasks are to the right. And if there's a green check, box, uh, check mark in the box, that means that that's something that they are willing to do. They will do it, they're capable of doing it, and they'd be glad to do it. If it doesn't have a check mark, then they're not going to touch it. Um, I don't usually use the basic thing right here. I typically go to manual priorities. This is how I was trained. Uh, so we're, we're actually going to do some manual priority setting because I want to put the right people in the right job and give them high priorities for certain things. So right off the bat, this is what I'm told. You take firefighting and you make it a two. Okay, so the lower the number, the higher priority. We're going to also make sure that everybody repairs when something needs to be repaired. You'd be surprised how many times these guys shoot at squirrels and they hit things that you need, like um, your your uh, uh, your power supplies and things like uh, what is it, windmills and so forth. And they have to fix that stuff, otherwise it doesn't work as, as efficiently. Uh, as far as doctoring goes, we're going to give the highest doctor that priority, and that's going to be a two priority. Everybody else can be, uh, let's do three. Doctoring's pretty important, so I guess we'll just do a three. I'm really not an expert with this, guys. I just do whatever, so I'm just going to make, I think everybody needs to warden occasionally, and this is, uh, oh my gosh, we're terrible. All three of us are terrible at <laughs> wardening. That could be a problem, because if we want to get other people to join us, Oh gosh, I never really even looked at that. It's not going to be for a long time anyway, but we'll just make that three. So maybe we can uh, we can work on that skill somehow. Or we can potentially get someone else that can handle it. Patient will leave alone. We're going to make sure everybody does cooking, but we want to do one cookerer. Who's our best cooker? cookerer? Oh, I thought I had better cooking. Oh my gosh, did I not look at this? Yeah, yeah. I'd spent all that time in the character generator thing, and I forgot about cooking. Hold on. Well, at least people are passionate about it. Not very good at it, but we can get some people that are 
got to work on it and get learning. How about we make, um, we'll make Spiffy our grower. She can do the cooking as well. Or we can make this guy Pablo. Pablo's a good cooker. Or, well, he likes it. I don't know how good he is at it. We'll make Pablo the cooker. So Pablo Punchwood, the ex-con mobster, is actually going to be our chef. Or at least he's going to prioritize that over everybody else. Um, so we'll make him our two cooker like that. And we'll just put four and everything else because I think that's what we're supposed to do. I don't know. Again, I don't really know how to play. I'm just kind of learning. And if you can learn from my mistakes, then great. Because mistakes will be made. And now I think we can put everybody into motion and see what they're going to do. So Chili is picking up the uh, the med kits here nice and slowly, bringing it over to the stockpile. And then Spiffy and Punchwood are going to get right on the growing. And then he's going to actually join them for that. So here's what we're going to do, guys, because this is going to take a long time. In the very beginning, I think we're just going to go right up to two or three speed. This will speed things up a little bit. And night is already falling. Now, while they're doing that, I would really like to get them indoors where it's warmer. And we need to get kind of a shelter built up here. So we can either mine into the walls, like I said earlier. Some people do that. They play it like Dwarf Fortress. I don't want to play it that way. I'm actually going to build... Um, we're going to build a structure. And we're going to make it out of wood. So wooden walls. Now, unfortunately... Unless the wood is in our stockpile, it doesn't get counted as being in stock. So we don't have very much wood for this right now. So let's do this. While they're cutting down some trees and gathering wood, we are going to plan out our house. That's what we're going to do. So let's plan. Planning tool allows you to plan out your structures without anything happening. So the, it's, it doesn't go into a queue. Nobody's ours building anything. It's just something. It's like a blueprint. Now, we're going to do that right now. So here's where we're going to get our food. Um, let's go ahead and make... I'm going to make three houses side by each. One, two, three over here. But I want to leave room for a kitchen and a, uh, a freezer. Uh, 